Ainga Tupulanga Parliamentary, Intergenerational Parliamentary, dedicated to Auntie Pepe Halsham. Rest in peace. Miti, New Zealand Born Dreams by Three Generations of Ainga Strixon Pua, Tolo Tupulanga, Generation Three. Fast flying shooting star changes through the past, goes on to the future, never stops forever. Alofa, shaven, six years old. Lua Tupulanga, Generation Two. With these eyes, I have seen the past. With this mind, I have seen the future. And with these feet, I create stability. And with these hands, I create change. Baledi, 27 years old. Tasi Tupulanga, Generation 1. Dreams open the door, freeing our searching spirit, allowing us to fulfill a life of alofa. Papa Mua, 54 years old. Papa Papa by Mokos Wilco, Jada, Maya, with Papa Mua, two generational. Verse 1. Wilco, five years old. My name is Wilco. Fucker Papa is being family. We are doing poetry. Jada is my cousin. Maya is my sister. And Fucker Papa is good for you. Verse 2. Jada, eight years old. Jada is my name. Fucker Papa is peace and family. Doing poetry at 12 Home Street with my cousins Wilco and Maya. We are family. I am Fijian Māori Pākehā, Jada Ali Pocock, Whakapapa. Verse 3, Maya, 11 years old, Jamea, but everyone knows me as Maya. Whakapapa, a yik strix and poor, art to poetry at home street, spending quality time with family, cool cousin, funny brother, they have and are never dull. I am part of this family, this heritage, this history, my fucker papa. Verse 4, Papa Mua, 59 years old. Mua Mua Sophie Strixen Pua. Ainga Purcell, Malai La Aliapata Upolu Samoa, Ireland, France. Ainga Pua, Papa Sa Toa, Savai Samoa. Ainga Lyman, Canton, China. Okalani, New Zealand, Tamaki Makauro. Aotearoa, Auckland, New Zealand, recording Whakapapa, creating Fatusola, living the art of Ainga, being Ainga, Fano, family, blessed by Atua the Lofa, our Whakapapa. Bushwalk by Wilco, six years, Jada, eight years, Shay, 14 years, and Papa Moore, 59 years, and two generational. Wilco's verse, Bushwalk. Jada, Shay, Papa Moore, me, to Onitangi Bird Sanctuary. Our forest needs sunshine to grow. It needs our love to grow. Feeling happy to be family. My story, my poetry, and we never walk alone. Jada, verse 2. Ngatihere hikoi. We spray our boots. Wilco, Shay, Papa Moore, me, following the stream walk. Now chasing Shay. Seeing colours of light green, red moss, yellow brown, dead leaves, dead branches. Seeing shapes, sharp, oval, triangle, circles. Ooh, and lines of pointy, sticky, smooth, bumpy, flax, hard, and fluffy, rough, wet flowers, strong smells, flowing air, smells like honey. Don't hurt the bush and respect nature. We never walk alone. Shay, verse 3, Val Savali. Green grass, birds and trees all surround me. Constant chatter about movies and ice cream. Papa stumbling along while me complaining about all that is wrong. It's more than a walk, it's a pack. Ever since we jumped off the ferry onto Waiheke Island, we've never looked back. All because our mama Linda, she keeps us in line. We always walk together, like a pack. We stay together. We never walk alone. Papa Moore, verse 4, at the back. I see Shay leading. 
Jada behind holding number two, while Wilco checks to make sure Papa Moore okay. These young ones are doing a trek towards their malanga ola, their life journey, but also creating their poetry verses, growing into their futures amongst the natural beauty of our Onintangi bird sanctuary. Waiheke Island, Tamaki Makauro, before Tane Mahuta, Tipuna, and Atua, Awainga, Wairua Tanga coming together. These mokopunas make us very proud. Hence, we never walk alone. Ainga Tupulanga Poementary, intergenerational poementary. Manuia. I wrote this collection for Anna, who some of you met, and our um, our love affair started when Samoa and Tina, our freshwater girls, were five to three, mm. and it ended when I was in Samoa and he um, jumped over our poem trail in the boat. So I'm going to start where we began, which was in Tina. Mm. I want to return to Tina, swim through the lava tunnel. Make garlands from laughter, see buckets of sun. I want to intercept history, paint do not disturb across your forehead, banish spiteful boasts, relocate your final standing place, undo your death wish. Come, my love, follow me down the mountain through the Fish will lomi lomi our tears into crystalline water. I will test you this time. And then I put in my ear to the kind of sky. I imagine you falling head first into the abyss, tumbling, tumbling, tumbling. Hoppa hoppa shirt billowing, ego shroud unbuttoning, pulling free, ascending, slicing blue at the foot of the falls, harsh exploding, becoming the sky. Comfort food. Grief has fangs, an insatiable appetite. My mother tries to help. Feeds me pisupu, parasami, paraka, weeds, herbs she doesn't recognize. When I go for time, it has already gone. The dark side of the moon. Grief is a fist of whirling muscle shells, slicing, scraping, shredding what remains. A white pigeon heard to flow in the coop, took me gently under his wing. Filei mua, filei offered water, seeds, leftovers. He ate everything except cooked carrots. Was a peaceful presence in my dismantled world. One morning, filei mua was gone, Waning Marcina rested instead on the guano splattered roof. I ate to patch her incomplete beauty. I am fully present, Marcina chided. Heal yourself instead of tinkering with my perfection. I closed my eyes, saw the dark side of the moon, white feathers. Sprinkling water to restore life. I wrote this um, at the horse paddock, just up the road. Mm. I heard high pitched squeals, imagined a bird in distress, rushed over slippery bridges into grass, heavily rutted by tires. Equine legs straining a wire fence alerted me to tragedy. A hedgehog, newly drowned in mud, Beneath the soulful gaze, I tried 
to resurrect the warm stillness, couldn't. There was a note in your back pack. Do not reanimate me, written in three languages. Pacific warriors were restored to life with water and sacred springs. You fought black dogs for decades, chose the pool of no return. This was written for um, uh, Tutu Karen. <clears throat> what if? Kofi and full throttle, fringe rivers feeding the dam. Golden bells float the wind, cascade waterfalls, peel over spillways, puncture water with radiance. What if you'd slip into this dam, been filtered and treated? pumped out, fit for purpose, continued the business of living. We'd be living in the spring, the bobbing coy of ecstatic tui, joyfully harmonising with messengers of the grace. And we finish with Into the World of Light. Uh, this is based on a dream that I had, and it was a two-week dream. I resolutely lanced my heart, the swollen fist about to burst with a sharp tooth plucked from a dream, poured honey into the first chamber, soothed lord memories, sent them off to flower bees, insulated the second chamber with foliage, power power hearts, blanketed moss, tempered feeling of abandonment, painted the third chamber wall. Ground turmeric mixed with coconut oil, loosened inflammations, angry grip, poulticed the fourth chamber with sukkah, toxins drawn into a sweet citadel, dissolved into spontaneous sun gelatinous. Bandaged myself with banana leaves, waded into the ocean, a sharp tooth pulsed, warned off Predators suspended around the measure of clocks, waiting, 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 until my grandmother's kingfisher brought me ashore, embraced by the uli uli, my ruptured casement of grief flew into the world. Henry and Valerie. Henry and two mates attended All Black Terry Levine's 21st birthday. Valerie and two of her nursing friends from King Seat went along too. As Henry recalled it, it was some enchanted evening when he saw Valerie from across the room. And when the unwanted man who was chatting Valerie up all night finally was pushed off, Henry took his chance to sit down with Valerie for the rest of the night. At the end of the evening, Henry asked Valerie, Can I take you home? Valerie politely explained she'd come with her friend Ursula and would have to leave with her. As Valerie recalled, it was a few days later when she was told there was a call for her on the party line. A familiar voice on the phone asked, Can I take you out? It was Henry. And Valerie, Valerie replied, Oh, all right. Valerie, Valerie agreed to meet in town, and as Henry had offered to take her home at their first meeting, Terry Levine's 21st, Valerie and girlfriend Marguerite agreed they would go on their respective dates, and then they'd all meet up at John Court's on Queen Street. So Henry could drive them all home at the end of the night in his car. Where did 
did you park the car, Henry? Valerie asked. What car? <laughs> said Henry. Although Henry was driving in those days, he didn't have a driver's license and certainly didn't have a car. The girls legged it to Simon Street and caused, caught the last bus to Kingsley. And Valerie recalled, well, car or no car, I was hooked. <laughs> 21 wishbones. A wish is the Lord's prayer to a rosary rattle, grandmother's broken necklace, a handful of amethyst beads, and granddaughter tears. Wishbones hang on the curtain cord, held in your little finger. Pull quickly, make a wish. Never break a wishbone fresh from a rope. A wish is tamarillos hanging by the tall swing, broken in half to sour-faced laughter, grandmother calling loudly from the path. Is a gecko in our room, a memory, now a poem, wishing we could go back to Tula Ele, wishing to hold hands one more time. A wish for a pink elephant, whispered and falling into the well. Remember, the secret to wishing is you never tell. Well, maybe just remember. Make a wish. Prayer, a dream come true. Watch your son cut his birthday cake. Eyes squeeze shut, murmuring a wish. He's five today. A wish for the honey to finally be ready. Steam rising to hiwa itirangi. Recalling those present and sitting on grandma. A morning potari, a watchful, catching gold wishes from grandma's lily-padded pond. A wish is like starlight, traveling light years to a future night sky of memory and childhood. What about the wishes of the children of the Ukraine? Is anyone listening? The wishes of children living in cars. Parents casting coins, wishing for change. A tide of wishes is coming, like a tidal wave. A wish is something your heart desires. Wishing for those who have nothing. Wishing for all the money in the world, or maybe just enough to pay the rent. Hiwa Iterangi. A wish is like fingers crossed for a black dog, arthritic and sore, eased by the gentle rubbing of a grandchild's soft prayer. Whispered in the dead of night, pleaded in the fight for life, they cannot be broken. So count the ever-present days till the wish you wish finally fades, you will realize it was everything you ever hoped for and more. Wishes, like kahu, fall and fly and fly and fall to be heard, granted, or denied. Be careful what you wish for, it might just come. Henry Raymond Sibelio Duile Mafua Stowers. Henry worked at York Paper as a machine operator. A noisy and heavy machine, Henry operated and maintained with skill and strength. One day he was working, a monarch flew around him, fluttering around his head trying to draw his attention. 
Henry being the attentive and compassionate person he is, took notice and discovered at the large window by his machine, another monarch was entangled in a spider's cobweb. Henry immediately, with great care, lifted the butterfly from the web and meticulously removed every fine, fine strand of web from its wings. Henry carried the monarch to the open doorway of the factory, the other monarch following behind him, took it outside, and they both flew away together. A dog came to Henry one day. She'd been thrown from a moving car onto the road outside York factory. The dog saw Henry, and although the factory was hot and noisy, the dog sought shelter from Henry and rested at his feet. Henry kept the dog, a Basenji cross, naming her after the colour of her coat, Amber. Boundaries are like Words. It's a collective term. Hard to put your finger on. Boundaries are a picture of a thousand words. Boundaries are like recipes. Some you can work out intuitively, and some need each step followed with measuring instruments and a timer. Sometimes alarms go off when boundaries are broken. Sometimes straight away, sometimes decades later, you can boil a frog, which illustrates boundaries. Boundaries are expressions of power. They are red flags for patriarchy of bullfighters who smear the bull's eyes with Vaseline and kiss the bull as it dies, pretending to love and respect the bull, which is unnecessary because animals are not allowed boundaries. Owners of tits and pussies have boundaries like the sea. Men hear it calling in the night. They want to conquer it. Water winds, when propelled by great violent forces, the sea is a training ground for boundaries. 80% of drowning deaths. It's a shame that the metaphor of ambulances at the bottom of cliffs is so overused in real life when the human body is made almost entirely out of boundaries, attuned to the swampy conditions that allow life in space. Women are animals, and so are men. We both breathe and feel men kill themselves more. Often, we're in a good sky. Birds are in it. Seagulls are starving. That's why we're stealing their fries, snatching them out of the air. The earth has boundaries. Can you feel them? It's like love, but also like being dead when your boundaries become hers. There, it's happening. The world blackens and separates into poetry. The helmet of stars above, like the undercut of Jeffrey's toilet bowl hair, which curves around his head, how pretty his writing was. The twirled J and the looped S and the twisted Y, the exact round of his Eyes. Now a man has walked all the way down the sidewalk towards us. Me and the cat crouching in shadow. Is that a little dog? The man says, skirting. Cat, I say. And the man leaves his hands in his pockets like letters. It's so hard to tell if the crickets are singing the same note. Vibrato harmonizes their songs into each other. Their perfectly invisible bodies, slick as kits from Knight Rider, 
cricket days and cicada nights, but it's too hot to be indoors, and the cat shouldn't be out here alone. Remember how he vomited into the napkin, and the vet held his training chin, saying, poor kid, poor kid. And the next thing, you were imagining him and his sister, two blonde girls, like saplings and a dad by the river, in kayaks, then flipped it to my dad, who wears his tongue in this intentionally now, like knuckle on his face, which couldn't help smiling sometimes. A mound of corned beef in one hand, a raw onion in the other, and a mountain of salt for dipping. His memories of food from childhood, more real than anything learned since. And now, my memories of his memories, as distant as the biographies of American presidents in his room, with too many references to get past the first page, next to piles of women's days, he called them women's magazines. Took them away to read secretly and forgot to put them back. <laughs> the dadness of him and the impossible task of letting it mean less. The first time I got away from the captain and the ship and strolled along sloping Whakawhihi Street in Neapu alone, I realized I'd flown over it in my dreams. In my dreams, my father was with me. On Father's Day, a ship called Gavake had called our ship. It's my dad's name. The hills and the soft-colored Art Deco homes nested against them, I expected, having swooped over them in my dreams, but not dominating Catholic Church, St. Joseph's, very white and luminous. A facade like a child's drawing, its stained glass windows decorated by the iconography you'd find in primary school books back in the 1950s. A review on TripAdvisor. I found the expedition photographer snapping shots of a Jesus statue in the flower garden, her lens inches from his face. She moved back when she saw me. Jesus was so white I thought it might be a joke. It'd be understandable if he was pure marble, but he was painted. Skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as the ace of spades. It was Sunday. I sat on a pew at the back, hymns rising as if winged around me, many hymns from many throats, worshipping one God, one holy trilogy, Jesus out in the garden listening, and my dad said to me, there was no real Tonga left after the missionaries arrived. I knelt at the right time, recited the responses I learned in school, shook hands and said, peace be with you, looking into Tongan eyes with my half Tongan. <clears throat> the overnight rain stops before I go, wake up and go walking. A blue ball is sitting in the wet grass, so kids live around here. It matches your eyes and the dress I want to wear tonight, but I have to bite first. Jasmine is choking out the natives in the creek and the bridge down the street where we used to hang out and look at the naked lady painted on the tree trunk. That also looked like a devil's head on some angles. Her outstretched arms, horns, her crotch of pointy chin. She's gone now and the trunk has split in two, although the tree is still alive. Half of the trunk has sent out thin branches that quiver like whips in the morning chill. Everyone I love has died. In one way or another, but we can call it spring. I died too, to make way for something new. Or we could call it spring. Blossoms swimming in the veins of trees all winter are emerging. My neck still needs a scarf, but the most tender petals are out, white and pink like little girls' faces. And the kōwhai tree, whose branches are the colour of my face, is clearly getting vermilion. 
I met an old lady at the coffee project getting my arm in flat white. She licked a keeper cup and talks about how the islanders moved into Waterview after the old people who used to live there died off. She said islanders with narrowed eyes and a pause. Anyway, she smiled and licks spit glints in the air. It's changed again. Now it's young families with children. I have uh, one piece left, but it's um it's a musical thing. Sometimes in the morning after hanging birth, I feel like I've been swimming. My nasal passages ingesting salt and wet. I know there's an ocean in me because of how I change shape when I fall in love. How I switch food for the taste of a lover. How I become smaller, lose gravity. So I've built a moat of sneezing at midnight of my octopus mind. Seething tentacles which think through touch and sort my anxieties into unsteady stacks, ignoring the floating by his clown face and flower hat. But even Fecky sleeps sometimes, floats limp at the top of the tank, dreaming in colour, shades of unfathomable beauty sweeping through the pearly body like memories without judgment. That's when I truly rest and my soul moves through states, solid, liquid, gas, formless, selfless and back, ankles heavy in the bed, crossed like they'll be when I'm dead, but for now I can feel them alive and resting on each other, and it feels like kisses, skin on skin, just me in my body. They say the truth is this, and the truth is that. So I found that the truth was a lie, see the actual fact is, my people, you were never invited to this place. You were hired to replace loose screws on machines that weren't up to scratch. A simple solution with invisible strings attached. But we came anyway, with hopes in our hearts and the sun on our backs. They opened up the gates and we came flooding in on planes and ships. They never understood our mother tongue until we sealed our lips. And silent we are still. We put on the boots of the steel tips and we walk. And we walk and we walk and we work. In the hopes the next generation can live for something better. Wrapping our dreams in fluorescent vests. Only to be more invisible than ever. Gotta make it, gotta make the next shift. Traded our way of life just for a quick. But paycheck to paycheck, that's how we live it up. Wake up just to regret waking up. But I gotta clock in and let the day begin. Put the bag on the conveyor and guide them out through the sealer. Put the bag on the conveyor and guide them out through the sealer. I didn't get paid for extra hours last week. Put yourself on the conveyor, guide your mouth through the sealer. That same work that doesn't get a say, I guess. I'm on the conveyor, my mouth through the sealer. Become another product for slave traders and dealers. See, I've seen this routine too many times before, but it's swept under the pallets of the factory floors. We stack and we store, and we stack and we store. Hopefully, we don't get stacked and stored. And when the boss asks, over time, we reply, sure. We fill our lungs with tobacco smoke, and I believe I'll end this conversation. If how was your weekend? Yeah, got pretty wasted. The type of cooking, the regular rotation about emails, about work, about sport, about emails. There's always that one guy who spends the best fairy tales. He might talk a lot of shit, but that's the entertainment for the day. Because the work is the same. The same needles pulled. The same machine broken. The same muscles turned. The same faces yawning. The old time was trying to school Australia did. We sat there with a filter between our lips, 
I spoke with the stain towards his jaw. His cigarette stained fingertips pointed up and wrist about the poor towel. It's bad enough that you get, that you get paid strips. You get treated like strips here. You say that's how capitalism works. We have families to support. Our choices are limited. Young man, turn down your talk about equality. You might be called a communist or a hippie, as if they were a bad thing. I could see the regret welling up in the corners of his eyes, his longing for a specific track in his gaze. I watched and his voice spoke his truth. One was becoming a reflection of mine. As we distance, we share the same aches in our spine, the same blistered skin on our knuckles. Is this the only way to provide? We just became a part of an endless cycle. The production line. The production line. The production line. <coughs> uh, shout out to West Auckland, but this next poem is where I'm from. Uh, Mangele, South Auckland. <coughs> My Mangele. It's been poured together, the slums, the projects mixed into one, a melting pot of drugs and crime and alcoholism that been here for the same damn time. Well, that's what the news say. They speak of poverty stricken streets infested with gangs and thugs. The pops circle the blocks and the choppers watch from the sky like vultures. See, some of this might sound bad and some of it might be true, but we, we call this here a rainbow of cultures, a rainbow of cultures. Come see the Saturday markets and you'll see what I mean. There you will find anything that you'd ever need, like clothing, music, house appliances, the occasional supply of green vegetable stands, the smell of island food fresh in the breeze. Come see our Chinese southernmost gangster shit, like fake gold chains and watches, and their mock off Nike tea. But as long as no one notices, then it's orgy. Hear the crazy street preachers trying to turn people into believers. Voices banging out the speakers. The time is near. Beware of the deceiver, but we pay him no mind. See, tomorrow is Sunday, and anyway, repentance is for church, but tonight we're getting turned. It used to be Club A-Way, driving past you hear the bass bumping and see the laser lights, but we only heard it on Thursday, because Saturday was old people's night. And that's what everyone's drunk uncle's kid did, and that was cool. They'd stick their regular drama. We sang songs of drunken fools, but if you're lucky, the only war that will be battled will be on dance floors. If we make friends of our enemies, just make sure you don't piss off any of the ladies, trust me. When I say we're part of the biggest Polynesian city in the world, it means we have the most beautiful brown women, but the angriest girls. You can forget about eating gourmet. See, we've got takeaways, next to takeaways, next to takeaways. Every major food chain around these ways. What's up to those who are around the back that you stack his backpack with pirated DVDs? But the use of new technologies have stifled his business, and now he sells movies on USBs. But there's no snitching around here. Now there's no snitching around here, see? You understand that life's a struggle and it's just a hustle. Like the kid outside of Countdown, hitting guitar licks that will make Kendrick smile. In the meanwhile, we just throw in some change, trying to find, find some type of change in us. As if the cost of the loose change menu was really enough. And times are rough, no question. I just get stressed because they're still guessing, knowing that they gentrified a whole section of my people because Polynesians and Quantum B wasn't picturesque. They pushed them out to the south. Forget equality, property over everything. Profit, the only sound they were hearing coming out their mouths. So, no doubt, poverty breeds the need for money, so harvesting seed to produce funds. It's not a choice, that's just life for some. Every corner liquor stores galore. And we protested and we said no, but our voices were ignored. And they opened more. One road across the road from the school. If our kids can see their fates, 20 steps away from their school gates, then what else is there to conclude but drugs, crime, and alcoholism happening at the same damn time? Their future doesn't sound so crazy anymore. It's getting dark in the 275. Harder to see our rainbow when the sun doesn't shine. But despite the strife, we managed to create our own lights. Brighter than any flashlight at a random spot. More fluorescent than any hybrid desktop. The non stop 
Brian and the grid, our parents went through on that 12 hour shift just to keep our mouths fed and keep our lights lit. We could never mimic our artist's creativity, creativity surging through our limbs, lips, or fingertips. You could never miss. See, this is hip hop mixed with the ghetto and the slum and the project kids from Mangere Central to the east and all the way to the bridge. Don't ever forget our rainbows appear right after the rain. So even when they put you at the bottom of the food chain, know that it's time to rise up. And so I raise up a cup and I toast to my town, to every shade of brown, yellow, black, and the splash of white that was ever down. This is for my Mangere. This is for my Mangere. Mangere. God knows how long the mother is still in the church of the Ghost Church. Nineteen fifty, nothing but the event of trees and Holocaust is here today. Well, especially there in uh, 42, there's a barrier, the whole gate in 45. That's when it was started. Military bunkers, military bunkers. Military bunkers built by the Americans, World War II, behind Hudson Street, and a marble temple church of Jesus Christ of the Lake Vincent, largest Mormon church in the southern hemisphere, so it's called by the Super Bowl, built in 2008. You believe that? I told you. There's no grandpa back there. We are ready for the Malayan War, young, fit, and sculptured, who ran in Fortuna Mall, Chan, and Rick Sky, from Union Jack. Zero post war therapies to battle walls, smashed windows, and broken furniture. Saturday, Mamik Duncan Confession, Sunday, hymns of remorse and sorrow. Papa Ipolito, a product of war. Nana Ama, a product of picking up broken pieces. My grandparents, grew to make no single one of us. 75 homeless people has come to the door of the third step to go speak. Holy mango for all sized mangoes. Right and juicy. Fed the buried people, season after season. Nana Emma, young, beautiful, and vibrant back then, 85 years old now. Biggest boss, she has seen it all. Bull Mango has seen it all. The vulgar, but not so great, and the small. Useless, used, full of nothing. I watched them hurt, hurt them, and fed them. Papa Ibrito sacrificed all for country, for military. For religion, for family, for culture. All the pain, the cruelty of war, Ipolito forever respected and adored. Sergeant Major Ipolito Augustus Kamari lost his father in his game, 37 times the most just for him going home. Everything changes in the barracks, yet again, nothing really changes in the barracks. They find a way, way to live, way to hustle, their way out of the barracks. Ipolito was a deep thinker. And you see things sometimes under the middle of the tree and pray. St. Michael, the archangel defended from all of our battles. Generations later, the still fell across the earth. Well, I was pretty mongrel. He left the distant coast and his heart from his back. No, only the father's wife said himself, God forbid anything should happen to her. He believed so. Full of stories, profound, funny, and intelligent. Memory, precious. Plantation is big in some past time every afternoon, early evening, so Papa is going to the back of the house over military paper, writing, writing on the stack right there. The only one in the valley. First school, 1987. Teaching you to force his real sign, I was four years old, looking down, so to speak. He felt he ignored me. Only in the beginning, so the time. 
journey into the city of the city. Major General Sikipin Dome was on the radio. 1993 plantation closed down by the American Embassy. 30 men, 30 people were taken away uh, to clear the path of the barrel. Wait for more territory. Hopefully, it was paralyzed by the building of the city. And the old days, you know, the plantation was gone, and that didn't recover. This is uh, our initial government. Sleepless nights, countless frozen dreams between wood and tea. Freshly lit candles burn in the air. Our thoughts brought together, allowed to be angry. Facing the front line, step by step, dream by dream, the hours disappear, soft and misty, burning in the dream. She has witnessed children bearing babies, unknown fathers, generation what next, all jeopardizing free. Lord, have mercy on souls. Doubtless, violent fathers, loveless, desperate mothers, sorrowful mistress, according to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. So it needs to go, see my children, going older, watching grandchildren grow. Great grandchildren grow, they have children. The cycle continues, untold stories, untold. I've been good from the of the world. I came back home to sit with men. Under the command of peace, the one master, for this, this thing, power, 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 This is for one for one. Kuli, Kuli, Kuli. And now, sharp teeth, the best is smile, glaring eyes, dripping down, black box, sharp cross, happy times, only mango, happy times, everybody, everybody. No one is safe, not even family. Aki was never scared of anyone, always made his fight count. Snuck in the first one, hit him on the dinner table, big and together on the foot. No boundaries were drawn. Pierced as the wolf, coming to the top. Raised her left cheek. Be careful, just look up on me and bite your face up with your feet. So he was on my last day. Make sure to call out before coming up the hill. Aki, see us here from a mile away. Like a calcium buffoon. A cannibal. Your life is a good flesh and blood. He will bite you. Whoever you are. Unless you're anti age, or man of hell. Go. Go.
You can't even overseas, stay in your weeds, don't know what it means to have eight babies in the mix. No father, no wins, we got the no receipts, we just can't sit for a few letters, just makes the world be wild. We still live in the land in the sense that we scrape together every week. Me cousin overseas thinks he knows me with all his me cousin, me cousin, me cousin. Yeah, yeah. Me cousin overseas don't know how me to lose it. Me to slip it to lose it. So me cousin send me currency, please. Or me cousin take your two stamps, please. And me cousin, me cousin, me cousin. Yeah, yeah. Me cousin, me cousin, me cousin. Yeah, yeah. Me cousin, me cousin, me cousin. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Falava. I'm Selina Tusi Talamash, and uh, this reading is dedicated to Ria Masai, who was the organisational muscle of this event and was unable to be here tonight because she got the coffee. <laughs> Schooled in Avondale. At playtime, you'd find me fighting off aliens in our bush spaceship by the fence line between Avondale Primary and Avondale RSA. I'd keep a lookout for Mum's burnt orange soft top flat Fiat Uno in the Raza car park, ever hopeful of scoring loose change from the pokey winnings that night. At Avondale Intermediate, you'd see me twisting my hair during dreaded maths with strict Mrs. Smith. Thank the Avondale gods she'd leave soon after to eventually become the globally renowned indigenous research methodology scholar Linda Tuhiwai Smith. After school, you'd find me caved up in the corner of Avondale Library or carrying a box of books home from the Avondale Spiders secondhand store. Before entering, I'd stink eye that gargantuan black spider hanging on its roof. When the movie Arachnophobia came out in 1990, it merely confirmed my suspicions that Avondale was an ancient spider's nest. I fantasised that I could command them to crawl into the foul mouth of Billy P, who left school early to walk, work at the Avondale Laser Shoe Factory. Every morning you'd find me clutching my burnt orange tartan Avondale college skirt around my knees to shield me from the dirty cat calls he coughed out of the street level windows. Becoming head girl changed nothing for him. Tall Samoan wallflower and Avondale rondal. And a rondal is a poetic form where you repeat certain lines and keep a certain rhyme. I was the last girl holding up the wall straightening out my curls in the school dance hall. Holding up the wall, palms pressed behind my back, in the school dance hall, boys stalked in packs. Palms pressed behind my back, teachers paired off in height, boys stalked in packs, Craig rolled his eyes. Teachers paired off in height, my heart unfurled, Craig rolled his eyes, I was the last girl. Enough of my Avondale dramas, dramas. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Poet Laureate List. My karanga mai, my matahiwi marae, my ceremony, the National Library, my tokotoko, my royal whisk, my fuwe from His Highness, my kapura tusitala, long slow burning flame, my going wild, my free and untamed, my trail running, my barefoot hike, my yoga mat, my spin bike, my school visits, my workshops, my vowel sounding, the haves and have nots, my tell your tale or someone else will. Or won't my bitter pill, my poetry preaching, my uni teaching, my sons, their dad, my oh my bad, my BFF, my British Vogue spread, my Gucci poem, my inside us the dead, my old man sandals in Westminster Abbey, my unshaken hand, all the backstabbing. My Dublin Green, my Dubai Tower, my 11 countries, my poetry is power. 
my black and bright, my ponder and sea, my poly alphabet for Michael Tuffery, my Obama evening, my poetic emceeing, my security breach, my suffrage speech, my tap tapped wrist, my banyan bliss, my mahina mahuika ra, my Maui here, near and far, my lianza keynote, my titi tiriti, my slanza keynote, my poem for the VC, my korowai poem for the PM, weaving lines from 165 women, my loving and living being in the middle, my fall off the horse, get back in the saddle, my mop head, my drawing of hearts, my outline story from end to start. This poem's called, let's see the paper, it's this one. Um, I wish I had handwriting like Sarah Lang. That's Sarah, L-A-I-N-G not Sarah L-A-N-G, the journalist. I got ridiculously excited when National Library invited Sarah Lang Lang to interview us poets laureate. I got visions of my submerged self being coaxingly caressed to the surface of Sarah's page, where, let me be frank, she's awesomely herself and drawing the quirks and foibles of real women and their real thoughts, where we laugh as we cry, where we live as we die to the fears and doubts riddling our very existence. And we are even open to what we given to our opinion that we stand for, see that self-reflexive vulnerability, inside talk and the outside is very serious and vanish. This is what draws me to her. This is why I fantasize of Sarah Lang inking my way into the graphic novel Hall of Fame, welcoming to sit beside her on twin thrones, wreathed in language. Love in the time of COVID-19. As the last plane is grounded, the last border closed, the last bag of rice whipped away from supermarket shelves, you send me Seneca, who feeds me what we want. We want for nothing. Our Allah quiet beneath the surface a bare trace till infected by belly embrace mutating with each contact till pandemic we start with one request one grain of rice placed on the first chessboard square to be doubled on the next till by the last square 18 quintillion grains are owed seduced by exponential love, bigger than you or me or COVID-19. Last poem. This one is called Aries Must Go or Two Dogs, One House for all Jack Russell Fox Terrier cross lovers. Big dog is four times bigger, was here first and Aries doesn't give a flying prick. Aries is too much. Too horny, too hungry, too ornery, too big hearted for the slip of his sleep body. He fights those four times his size, madly humps legs the shape of Espiritu Santo, rams his head into the jaws of death the size of Big Bay, and says, Eat me, my dear. Aries must go. Little god of war, conquering where none have conquered before. But big dog's bone bonds are very deep in time. Aries chews big dog's meat, leaps out of tall round laundry baskets in a single bound, shits where he likes, when he likes. But for liver, Aries will sacrifice his litter his mother, 
his father were perfectly run and born on circles on his back. For Luma, he would suffer big dog's bites and the crushing weight of those four times bigger. But Luma, he would rarely jack anyone in anything in his way. For Luma, he would sit like Buddha, eyes praying to the skies. For Luma, he would dance like Shiva, left leg lifted high, ringed by belly's fire. For Luma, he is loving, slinging the soft hammock of his body across your chest, beating down every other So, there is most of <laughs>